Alhamdulillah for the immense month of Rabbil Awal and inshaAllah give us an ability to convey inshaAllah from our app we entered into the third lunar month that we were in the cave and the Qur'an is bringing us and explaining to us that this cave is the doorway to the heavenly kingdom. So we take the third lunar month is Rabbil Awwal and that multiplied by the nine because this is the passageway of the sultanate and the kingdom brings us to the reality of 27 and 27 is a gate on earth, <coughs> the secret between 2 and 7 that Allah has us for all holy events it's on the 27th. The month is, a, is an opening and within it days are portals doors into these realities. The 27th has to do with the door towards the heavens and the reality of the heavens. We open on this month the reality of 27 and Holy Qur'an that guiding us Surat Al-Nam, the ant <coughs> is the guidance for this month. So from the app we look at the months we see 27th. Isma Rasul the name of Prophet which is the key for all treasures and Mudathir, the one who shows patience during difficulties. And the name that it opens of Allah Sifat al-Basir which is spiritual vision. So the one who wants the sifat and the name of al-Basir to be opened within their heart, the key of Prophet is Nabi al-Mudathir that Prophet dressed the servant through patience and perseverance is the key. The surah that is the reality for this month through Zannam and its immense powers. And then we have some points from Surah Al-Nas. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Nam that are important so one reads Surah Nam as an understanding for the gate of this, the parda, the gate and the veil of this portal that we are now entering in. And it's zikr in which Allah is eternally dressing the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana man huwa al-da'imu la yakhta. Glory be to the one whom is eternal, perpetual and who never ends means now we are in the world of malakut, entering into a timeless reality. <clears throat> and from A'uzu Billahi Min Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, the Holy Surah begins with ta seen tilka ayatul Qur'an wal kitabin mubeen. Tilka ayat al-Qur'an wal kitab al-mubeen. Yeah. 
<clears throat> we left Ashab al-Kaf and the realities of entering the cave and that seeking refuge in Allah and keeping a way in which to always seek refuge from difficulty by entering into that cave that we make for ourselves with our belief and our practices to enter into a timeless energy. Qur'an this month then dressing us from the fire of that Divinely Presence which is ta-seen. The ta is the purified fire, tahir. Seen is the sirr and the secret that we are achieving by entering into these realities. Mizanullah is dressing for us that once you're in this cave leaving the physical dimension because as you meditate, as you're contemplating you're entering now into the fire like a moth to the flame. So their poetry is describing this section right now where Abhidha Parveen's the, we, the one we play like a moth to the flame that come into this fire, don't only look at it, be from it. And many, many qasidas and realities about that immensity that now you're entering into this Divinely fire. It's understanding ta'seen, this reality of Prophet Tahir al-Hadi, the most purified guide of the Divinely Presence. That it's not a light, he's a fire. So when people ask him, why you show fire on the SMC? Because we're not talking about a reflection. A light that come to you like a fluorescent light bulb is a reflection. We're not talking about going into the source of light which is a fire. The sun is a fire, the moon is a light bulb, the moon only reflects it's not the, the source of light but the source of light is the sun. So Allah bringing us into the source of it, this is not a reflection. This reality is, is the source that makes everything to reflect and it's immense, immensely purified that beyond anything that can be understood Allah created this reality out of an immense purity that there can be nothing purer than that, above that is Allah this is creation. So in this understanding of creation, Tahseen is the name of this flame And then to be dressed by the Ta is that Allah make us Tahirul Hadi from Taha, the purified guides. That Allah wash them, cleanse them in this flame. Everyone must enter this flame. Those whom come willing, they relinquish everything and enter the flame willingly. Those who come unwillingly, they call it hell, right? Because they're coming with their goods, they're coming with their desires. They're coming with perishable items into a non-perishable eternal realm. Means the, the ones who don't have that love for Divine, to them all of this sounds like hell because they want to live on this earth for a thousand years. They don't want to make a reckoning with their Lord, they don't want anything from the heavens. So it's like somebody coming with all their goods. And you're telling them that beyond this point is a firewall, your goods are not available anymore. What deeds have you brought with you? Where is your shelter going to be? So I brought nothing and I prepared nothing. Hence that sounds like a difficult place for them. This fire when 
God grants us a willingness of His love, willingness to achieve, willingness to want to succeed, this becomes the flame of love. The reality is one, your perception of it changes. When you walked away from everything else in your heart, you have to have home, you have to have a car, you have to have all these things but in your heart your belief is that, of course I believe in my Lord and of course I want my place in His kingdom. And I put that in perspective that that's my eternal journey and my effort and my greatest effort is for my eternal journey, they willingly enter the flame. And this process of moving close to the flame is what we call testing. Things leave your life and your life becomes like a pruned bush. You come, many people come to tariqah, come to the gate and come to the way. It doesn't have to only be tariqah, everybody comes towards their, their Lord but they come like a wild bush. Too many branches, too many things growing on it, you know. When a farmer has a, a nice bush like apple trees, we went to apple orchard, all the apple trees were very short. In the wild they grow all over the place but the tree has so many efforts to send a fruit, it has the inability to have good and decent fruit on it because the branches are just all over the place. When you go to a nicely trimmed and manicured farm, the trees are actually short, all bushy and the fruits are ripe because whatever energy the tree is going to produce is going to be for the fruits and everything else that's not necessary is cut. So in the wisdom of our lives God prunes things that are not necessary. So that effort that you put in your life, the thing that you want, the thing that you're running for, if God doesn't believe it's necessary for your tree to grow and your reality to grow, this is the pruning of our life where things get cut out, things get sort of taken away, things get sort of refocused in our life. So as we're entering to that flame it's so much more beatific to do this slowly than to be thrown in the grave and think of it as a fire of difficulty because that will burn all the branches immediately. Because you're coming into the grave with you know your, your couches, your possessions and everything you want it's not gonna fit. So the concept of jahannam and, and fire and punishment is there relinquishing of all of these desires and possessions. So awliyaullah come and inspire, come to this flame willingly. As you slowly walk to it you'll realize what God takes away from us was not necessary to begin with. And what He nourishes us is what is necessary for our eternal journey. And this becomes a path and a walking of immense love. Tawassul bi haqqi wa tawassul bi sabr. It's not fast but this path of truth requires patience. Allah swears by this reality, tilka ayat al-Qur'an wal kitab al-Mubeen that this fire that you're entering into now from this ta of my purified guide who wants to dress his nation from this purity. He wants to grant them the seen which is secret, the sirr, which is the ilmu yaqeen, aynu yaqeen, haqqu yaqeen, means these are all the tools of eternity. They don't grant accounting knowledge, they don't give you the, the, the racehorse numbers of which horse and which lottery tickets are going to win, the knowledges of eternity. The ilmu yaqeen, the knowledges that grant you a certainty and knowledges of the heavens. Ayn al-yaqeen is that to be trained on your spiritual vision, sifat al-basir, ahl al-basir and that your knowledge and your training and vision opens for you the truth of all certainties. Because the one who knows the reality, sees the reality, he's dressed from that reality, it is a truth for him. That's why the tariqah shaykhs they cannot talk about something they have not witnessed and they have not tasted. They cannot read a book for you on these subjects, it's completely haram for them. It's forbidden for them to be a hypocrite, talk on a subject that they didn't touch 
and they didn't reach and they don't know its taste. These are shaykhs of guidance that if they're talking they taste it, they dress from it therefore they're given permission to speak from it. So they dressed from the scene, Allah dressed them from this tahir and purity and within their heart is a reality of ta'seen. And Allah swears by that, tilka ayatul Qur'an because these are people whom are ayatul min ayatullah, they are the signs of Allah that the Qur'an dresses them and there are signs of Qur'an. Qur'an and Mubeen in which is clear, they have clear realities that dressing. What Allah wants for us, enter into this flame. This is the flame of all flames that have been talked about. It will purify you and rid you of what is not necessary by the Divinely Presence. The flame that appears to be of a burning and painful nature, Imam Ali described, face your fate, that don't have fear. What looks to a fire to other people for the believer, as soon as they step and step and step, قُلْ يَحْنَارُ كُنِ بَرْدًا وَالسَّلَامًا عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمٌ And Allah gave for Sayyidina Ibrahim the same. The say to the fire, be cool and peaceful, O Abraham. Same fire that the Prophets of God have entered into this flame and they, this flame is the way of the heart. So on our shirts we used to have a logo of the who and the who was in the center of a fire because this guidance of who. And this guidance of the who men is traversing into this flame and you have to be from inside this fire which continuously is a burning because it continuously burns other than what God wants. So continuously they're in this flame and as a result they are the people of immense Divine love and guidance. So when Sayyidina Ibrahim was cast into this fire because he represents on the sir sir, he represents in the levels of the heart this proximity and closeness and companionship with Divinely Presence. Means that they walk with God, Allah becomes the faculty of their hearing and their seeing. And it's because of that flame and that fire that they entered into this fire, as a result the fire allows them to hear. So they have like a flame burning on them like a fire how you could give it out as a description like our logo. They've animated our, our logo because the Imam of all these is Imam Ali Salam. That when God dresses you and blesses you, his Divinely flame is all over you, that's why nothing can touch you. As a result His fires dress your hearing, His fire dresses your seeing and that becomes the immense dress, قُلْ يَا نَهْرُ Say to this fire, كُنِ بَعْدًا وَسَلَامًا And that has an immense, immense reality with Allah's La ilaha illallah and the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah That when Allah is the flame and the fire of all existence, Allah made Muhammadun Rasulullah to be cool, bardan wa salaman. Prophet is bardan wa salaman. Nobody can go to Allah because they will be extinguished. Right? So, what I'm describing is this immense fire. If you were to move too close to it, 
you cease to exist. So on the miraj and the ascension of Prophet into that flame, into the closest proximity of the reality of that flame, Sayyidina Jibreel had to stop. Why? Because now he entered into a dimension which is only La ilaha illallah and the only other one in that proximity is Muhammadun Rasulullah and he defined the border. He says, if this border I pass I cease to exist for all of eternity. Not that I can come back, I can re-manifest, I will cease to exist. There is nothing between you and Allah and there is no creation there, there is nothing there. It's La ilaha illallah, the fire of Divine that nothing can enter into and burn away any partnership, has no association, has nothing onto its likeness. And Allah made a border of coolness and that coolness is the soul and the light what we call Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result between the cool and the hot what happens is perspiration. Hum, hum, what do they call? Humidity, right? When the heat comes on the cool, the drips of hum, humidity comes. That perspiration is the creation of all creation. Everything is coming into existence from the sweat of Prophet's light. In the proximity of Divine Fire, the coolness of Prophet's reality and what it emits is the droplings of light. All creation is in the reality of those drops. <coughs> but they have Qawba Qawsaini O Adana, O Adana, between the two bows of La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah, the fire hits Muhammadun Rasulullah and the drips of creation come here in the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah. They don't come in the creation of La ilaha illallah, there's nothing there, that fire burns everything. What Allah created of a rahmah and a mercy, not the physicality of Prophet and then He named it like that. This is an ancient reality of lights in which Allah created creation in this reality. That Allah is the eternal flame and fire in which nothing can approach it and the barrier of coolness, this parda and this Veil of coolness is known to us as Muhammadun Rasulullah an ancient, ancient a reality that can't even be understood and when it came into existence. And creation is all within that container, all beads of sweat that are coming into existence. Sayyidina Jibreel couldn't move beyond that perimeter because he doesn't exist in that flame. He exists within the vase, within the droplets of Muhammadun Rasulullah That's the hadith of Jabr where asked Prophet what was the first of creation? Ya Rasulullah, my light and everything from my light. In Surat An-Nur Allah describes, it's like a misbah. Is Sirajan Muniran. What did the, the lamp is called in Arabic? Misbah, the lantern. And everything is existing within that lantern. All creation, all angels, all heavens, all every creation, dunya, akhirah, everything is all within this lantern, all from this ocean of light. So back to this flame, 
This now this portal is describing itself much clearer because we're entering now into the kingdom. Twenty-seven has to do with the reality of the kingdom. <clears throat> So 27, Surah 27, Hajj Shahid, let me give you the… Hmm. Ayah 7 and Ayah 8 inshaAllah say. So Surah 27, Ayah 7, Ayah 8. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إذ قال موسى لأهله إني آنست نارا سآتيكم منها بخبر أو آتيكم بشهاب قبس لعلكم تسطلون فلما جاءها نودي أن من في النار ومن حولها وسبحان الله رب العالمين صدق الله العلي العظيم مبارك دي رسول الكريم حبيب العظيم that Allah is a job giving in ayatul al-kareem <coughs> And when Moses said to his family, indeed I have perceived the fire and I will bring you from there information, from a fire he's going to bring information and bring from you a burning torch so that you may warm yourselves. One this is now Allah describing this fire that this is a, a source of immense knowledges and wisdoms, that this is a, a flame of realities and Divine guidance. The words that were used actually Qabasin is a burning torch, means that this fire that I'm going to enter into it's going to come back with me. I'm going to be dressed by this flame and this reality, it is the Divinely Presence. Nobody n enters near that flame but that is affected by it, dressed by it. And that becomes the immense ocean of realities and knowledges. And the reason for the fire and the condition the servant must be in to acknowledge the fire. That if, if you're not cold you would not have approached a fire. So every condition Allah puts us in is so that we walk through the correct door. Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabibul Asbab, Ya Mufatih Abwab, Ya Musabibul Asbab, that the one whom put me in a condition is the one who is pushing me to go through that door. If you're not cold you won't go into a flame. If you're hot you say, why well, I'm going to go to that fire, I'm so hot now I don't feel like anything near a fire. So the wisdom Allah is showing that every condition has a door, make sure you chose the right one. When He knocks you around and you have difficulties it's a sign there's a door you seem to be missing it. Everything in our lives is a guidance. The one whom seeking is always attentive to themselves and everything around what is the sign, what is the sign. The one who's heedless has to take a lot of hits left and right and they live a life reactive which is horrible. They go from one calamity to the next calamity 
And what their training is, Rijalullah, the, the, the mature and the men of God whom are both men and women, there's no gender. Those whom are mature in the way they are very proactive people. They don't need go to beat them around to get them to wake up. When they wake they're up, as a result everything is a sign for them. That every condition God puts me in, He's asking me to make a choice because that's what the du'a is saying. That every condition you've been put in make the right choice, don't pass this up because you pass it, it may take a long time for it to come again if it ever comes again. So this life of ours is now govern yourself accordingly to this fire and this flame. Enter into this flame, take the dress of this flame, it will burn away all that's not necessary, no need to cry about that, no need to worry about that. We described before, don't think of the past and don't think of the future. Live only within this moment because that's all that exists. Whatever was past has nothing to do, you can do nothing about it. You have a certain amount of energy at every moment. If you spend that energy, for example, you have 10 gallons of charge or gas on yourself, your car. If you spend eight gallons thinking about the past and if you think a lot about the past you probably worry a lot about the future. And you spend another two gallons worrying about the future, you are, you are considered spent. You finish the fuel, you finished your energy your ability to bring out your energy on everything from the past you worried about <coughs> and you finished all your energy on all the fears of the future. So now scientists came out with this, they sent me an article on scientists talking about quantum physics, describing exactly realities now. That you're producing an energy, make an intention, meditate, you have an energy field. This energy field you nourish it with ishq and love and muhabbat for the Divine. As a result with this love and this Divine energy that you have, the more you meditate, the more you focus, they described it like a ripple effect. If you take a rock and you throw it in water, it ripples. If you could train yourself every day to throw a rock or every few hours, the ripples would be continuous, continuous a flow of energy. The same for the one whom, Kullu amalun bin niyat, every action is based on intention Allah describes. The one whom sits and intends and meditates on Divine love, not human love and love amongst people, love for the Divine. Is like a rock in the heart, a ripple of energy, ripple of energy, ripple of energy until they vibrate so much of this Divinely energy all around them. That's what we said in the shaykhs, if they operate Allah brings the power of their soul out. Their love can touch the entire earth because they're connected into the entire heavens. But for those who are starting and trying at least nine meters around you, you should be able to change matter. Why? By understanding your vibration and your energy. So instead of building this light and this love and this ishq, you start to now use this energy about what happened in the past. What? Focus on what? what? You now stopped this vibration and this energy of building your positive charge. You're now focusing on something that you have no more control over and that's all shaitan wants because he doesn't want you to fly, he wants to hold you with one chain down which is called your past and hold you with another chain in the front called your future. Then you start worrying about the future, how's it going to be like this, how am I going to feed, how am I going to this, how am I going to do that? And before you know it you spend so much energy on these two that you have nothing for right now and you're not vibrating at any energy. 
because you just spent it all. So when they say, live in the present is very real, I can do nothing of the past, Ya Rabbi, past is gone and you're the only one who knows my future. So let me just worry about now and meditate now, focus now, do my energy now. As a result of building this energy, building this flame, this energy begins to change everything around you. That's why in Surat Al-Kahf Allah described, come, come into this cave, we'll give you a mercy, means the pulse of your energy will begin to come out and will begin to settle your affairs. Means if you're resonating with this energy and people are hating you, hostile to you, a jealous of you, aggravating you, if you resonate with this Divine protection Allah changes all of that. Their hostility can't reach you because you have your shield of protection. Their hatefulness and bad character either will push them away or change their outlook or their view of you because you are resonating at a positive energy. The ones that not necessary be pushed away, the ones that are harmful be protecting so that that harm doesn't come to the servant. But you lose all of that if you're worrying about the past and worrying about the future because you have no shield to protect you. So their life is only now. They do their zikr, they do their awrat, they make their connection, they make sure they're good with God right now. Their love for the Prophet so that they're keeping the laws, the reality, the, the love and the nearness and as a result they're in that flame right now and it resonates and corrects everything in their life. Anything not meant for them it, that love will keep all the enemies away. And they have a shield and aura of protection. And somebody else emailed, oh I watched a, a video on an interview with a sorcerer and the sorcerer <laughs> which I don't know why he would watch that but maybe accidentally he came across that and he's saying, SubhanAllah Shaykh whatever this, <laughs> this person was saying these are all in your teachings. Because the interview is asking, are the people that you can't reach? He says, most definitely. They have uh, things that they put around themselves, they have chants that they've encased themselves and energies that block them and ancient beings that guard them and that's not something we can penetrate. So the energy world knows these realities and shaitan knows that reality. So shaitan all he wants to do is what? Take your energy down, worry about the past, what can you change from the past? Allah forgave you because you're sitting here now, if Allah didn't forgive you He would throw you in a fire. So it's already assumed you've forgotten because it's been forgiven because you're sitting in the circles, you're hearing this teaching, you're watching on YouTube. In the future, oh you have nothing to do with the future, all you have to do is make sure you're good with Allah right now. Today is a good day, tomorrow inshaAllah better. As a result they're dressed from these energies, they're protected with these energies. Then what Allah gave in the next ayah, eighth surah, the eighth ayah, He came to this fire Now Allah describing this fire and He said, and He heard, blessed whoever is in this fire, whoever is around this fire and exalted Allah I am Allah Lord of all the worlds. So means that Allah is describing, can you recite Surah 8, uh, uh, Surah 27 verse 8 one more time inshaAllah to you. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. فَلَمَّا جَاءَهَا نُودِيَ أَمْ بُورِكَ مَنْ فِي النَّارِ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمُ بَنَكَ رَسُولِ الْكَرِيمُ I have a word for word app. More 
beatific than the translation in English, Burika blessed that he was called into it, Nudiya, blessed is he that he was called into this presence and that he came. And when he's around it and whoever is in that fire they are blessed. <coughs> and their blessing from Allah Lord of all the worlds and Allah's glory Subhan be upon them. Meaning more it was they heard the call to Allah not that they came to a random fire but they heard the call to Allah and labaik they came to it. And whoever entered into that Allah began to now clarify to Nabi Musa this is a holy place, take your shoes off you are now in a Divinely Presence. And this is the immensity of this cave, the immensity of this flame and the immensity of Mauni the Nabi It's not a coincidence that Allah brought the birth of Prophet on the third lunar moon, on the third lunar moon to dress from this reality, bless from this reality and for us to understand the immensity of this cave, the immensity of this fire and that this is the birth and the reality of this flame its birth. When Allah was a hidden treasure wanting to be known this flame came into existence. And the existence of this flame is for Allah to be known. For what Allah want people to come into these Divinely lights? It's so that they can know the Divinely Presence and Allah wants to be known by this immense reality. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensity of, of Mawlid and Nabi the birth of creation, the birth of all realities. And that Allah grant us from Taseen this purified light and purified secret. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen Muhammadillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.